Hi guys, time to build a real rocket. And I'll check on my laundry in a bit. So you, bye. You, you get a new number. Three? This will probably be the last one in the Feihu group. Really. Okay. Now what? The pod has everything it needs. Aerodynamics. Structural. Yeah, everything we got is all structural. So. That fuel tank. That engine. Decoupler. Set them to launch together like normal. Propulsion. Make it a big one. Go for all eight, because why not? Is this really a good idea? I think not. Okay. Aerodynamics. <laughs> Is this a good idea? I think not. Lowers it slightly. That's a good idea! going to get so many Kerbals killed. Okay, and as usual, when the one decoupler goes off, get the engines going. Structural. Another decoupler. Propulsion. That. And as usual, rockets go off when a decoupler goes off back to structural. We definitely want some space duct tape. This thing is pretty unstable and I want it to hold together. That did nothing. What is wrong with you? Over the love of butter. That worked? Why did that work? Wait a minute, why is this attached to the decoupler? This whole thing is just a drunken debauchery. Okay, so those will hold together. And we'll have something going from each nose to that. Seems legit, I guess. Should hold together. I don't know. Uh, Bill, you're still expendable. We'll have you fly it. And stupid. Save. Okay, Feihu 3. Let's see if you explode. Okay. Well, ah, what are you doing? Good grief. And my cursor too close to the top. Launch it! It's currently working, at least. It's taking up a lot of thrust, but that's because it's got a lot of rockets and fuel. This should definitely make at least a flyby of mine. I mean, it's certainly got enough fuel for it, good grief. And enough stages. And first stage over. Second stage. Yeah, 
Yeah, first stage didn't get us too high, but you know, as long as the second stage makes up for it. Bill seems apprehensive about everything. <sighs> Bill, what am I going to do with you? I'm clicking on it. Observe the goo. Point one science. We'll at least keep it for now. Bill, do you have anything of scientific value to say? No. Just that the beaches look kind of nice. Whatever, Bill. Well, that's getting us a good max altitude so far. Uh, keep that open. That's actually getting us quite high. And the fuel gave out. But we're into the upper atmosphere already. Crew report... nothing. He adjusts his helmet. Seems to be getting cold. Recycle it. With no atmosphere to slow us down, we'll go at full speed. Yeah, we've only got that one last stage left, but that should be enough to get us to Mun. Namely because we've still got like half a thing of fuel on this. Alright. Only goal with this is to fly past Mun. So now we will set Mun as the target. We really should be aiming for the ascending node, which is that line there. But it's doing this weird wobbly thing now. Namely, because we don't technically have a real orbit. So it's just kind of doing its weird thing. Ugh. Really, what we're going to do is get to a point where we can intersect Mun, uh, expand our orbit so we don't crash into the planet, and then just wait until we can get close to the darn thing. Eh, Apoapsis is increasing steadily. This is good news. Just a little bit more. And we should be able to fly past Mun. As I said, our goal is not to land on Mun at all. It's not even to orbit Mun. It's just to get close to it, to look at it. Actually, going to s slow down a little. Ooh, ooh, ooh! That's important. Okay. We can actually just keep speeding up. No, 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 no. I thought we could just speed up and we would intersect it. That was a Terrible idea. Okay, we need that. We will now speed up. We're not going to intersect Mun on this pass. We might be able to get it next time, however. What we need is to create a periapsis. Okay, that's enough periapsis. Thank you very much. Okay. 
Okay, okay, okay. Um... Will speeding up make things get closer? Yes. No, 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 no. That's a terrible idea. Terrible idea. Slow it down. Horrible, awful, horrible idea. We'll reset the use goo container, see what it has. Get some new goo right at home here. It's the same amount, really. Uh, crew report? Worthless. So we'll orbit a couple of times. We'll get that darn thing to enter. Oh, oh, it'll intersect on the next pass. Perfect. Perfect. We'll just get close to the mun, get the readings, and come back. That should get us loads of science. and a funky orbit. We just have to get Bill back to Kerbin. He's useless if he's dead. Okay, okay. This is good, this is good. Uh, hmm. If I go full 90 degrees... That's bad, that's bad. That is not the direction I want to go. We will go 270 degrees. This way. Okay, that's good. When we get close to Mun... Where, where's Mun? There's Mun. Am I at the periapsis? Not yet. Little bit more. Once we're at the periapsis, we'll take science stuff. Observations. Yes. Crew report. Look at the surface of the moon and try to find a good landing space. The inside of the craters might be the best option. Fifteen science. Thank you. What do we get from the goo? Observation while in space near Mun. It seems to be less dense here. I forgot to check how much that was for. Doesn't matter. We'll reset the goo canister. And observe the goo. Less dense here. For 30 science. Keep the data. All of that science combined should be enough to buy the science lab. And batteries. Oh my god. God, that orbit is terrible. Doesn't matter. We've got everything we came for. Now we just have to get back to the planet. We'll adjust the orbit at the apoapsis, because that'll be the fastest way to change the periapsis. And I want to conserve as much fuel as possible. We're close enough. Okay, okay, we can do this, we can do this, we can do this. Come on, there we go. Right at 270 degrees. No, no, Mun, you're not going to ruin this for me. This is going to be awesome. Okay, we have... Well, we'll hit the planet. 
I'm not quite sure what to call it, but we're going to hit the planet Kerbin. Are we close enough to see Minimus? It's kind of sunward. Where's the sun? There's the sun. I have no clue where Minimus is. Okay! Speed things up. There's Mun right there. Planet Kerbin. Us. And we've even got fuel to slow our descent. Yes! Ha <laughs> ha! The Mun passed us. We are now below Mun's orbit. And we are very close. Very close. Woohoo! Okay, point ourselves up. Up and that way ish. Hmm. Where are we going to land? Nowhere near where I'm looking at. Sweet. It still makes me nervous. Well, we're over the water, at least. Yeah, it'll still be over the water. Sweet! Okay, okay. Point up. For an engine at full power. We'll tilt the craft this way because I feel like it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We don't need to do that that much. I did my, my job too well. Too well. Okay. That can certainly wait. <laughs> oh my. Yeah, this is a horrible re-entry, I think. Okay, slow it down. Yep, this re-entry got better. Okay. Okay. As long as we don't burn up on re-entry, which is what should normally happen if your re-entry is like this. You'll, like, skip off the atmosphere or something, I think. I don't know. I'm a massage therapist, not a rocket scientist. <laughs> okay, this is looking good. We got past the dangerous parts. Okay. We're actually just going to let it burn out of fuel. I hit the parachute button. Why isn't the parachute working? Deploy the shoot. Jesus. 
Okay, and we will turn off the SAS. Goodbye, fuselage! Oh, is it going to hit that bright spot, the sun thingy? Oh, tell me it hits that and it explodes. It's going to overshoot it, isn't it? Crap, I thought I hit a bullseye. Yeah, it's going to overshoot it. Well, I tried. Hi. Maybe the atmosphere will slow it down a little bit more. I don't think so. Yeah, it's not going to be a bullseye. It's not even going to be an explosion. It'll just be a splash. Why am I still watching this? Why am I still recording this and making you guys watch it? Oh. Okay, well, something... Bill just drains electricity for some reason. I don't know. Plays radio... Blogs? I don't know. Watches TV? Hmm. Flicks lights on and off? That's, that's probably what he does, let's be honest. Well... Yeah, it was close to a bullseye. I thought it would be like right about there-ish, and now it's just bit down there. So it was close. Oh, excuse me. Ouch. That was kind of painful. Oh. So yeah, it was close to a bullseye. I'm satisfied with it. Well, now anyways. Uh, this is gonna take forever. I want to at least have the splash on camera. Although it's only a thousand meters away, and the dryer just went off. Is his head poking out through the top or something? No. I thought that was like the top of Bill's head. It's kind of greenish and square-shaped. Come on. God, that keeps freaking me out. It looks like the top of Bill's head. There's a 1,000 meter distance, and we are 2,000 meters away. That splash will show up eventually. Ugh. And now it's completely missing the reflection of the sun. Hey, the splash was on camera. Sweet. Just in time for the shoot to deploy. When I would normally cut back this happening. <sighs> well, let's get an idea of the size of the planet. I wonder where that landmass I was worried about hitting is. Well, this is slowing down the game considerably, so we'll zoom back in. <laughs> This is probably like the size of my house. I have a small house. Actually, no, this is larger than my house. When I had the fuselage, though, that was probably the size of my house. The fuselage and rocket. Ooh! It eclipses the sun. That amuses me way more than it should. But then again, what else are you going to do while you're very slowly falling down to the Earth? Kerbin. Whatever. Planet! The planet surface. Oh, we're only halfway there. Come on, little dude. Well, Bill's happy. You know, you really should be more afraid of splashdown and stuff with me at the helm than you should at launch. My launches have been pretty good so far. Splashdowns are scary. Landing is scary at all. Ugh. 
I was only been on a plane once, and I don't see how people can do that so often. Pure and total silence as we wait for it to fall. Great. I usually play this with the sound off while I'm doing something else, pretty much. Oh, oh, we're gonna do it! We're gonna do it! Okay, that's kind of a cool view, right there. Camera angle. Throttle down! The goo pods kind of weigh down a little. Escape. Space Center. Center. Birds chirping at two in the morning. Apparently. I don't know. Fehu. Three. There it is. There's the crater. I don't even know where the space center is. We're going to recover the flight. Cover it! Aw, oh, yes. Crew report while in space near Mun, 15 science. Mystery goo observation near Mun, 30 science. The other th mystery goo observation, 6.9. Recovery of a vessel returned from a flyby of the Mun, 12 science. Aw, oh, yes. 63.9 science this mission, 65 in total. We can afford new crap! Uh, we'll have to do another flyby of Mun, or maybe Minimus, to get all the crap we need. Okay, this has all the stuff we need for now, because we can go places. We need this. Okay, and what we need next... So here's landing, itty-bitty landing gear, itty-bitty... Uh, yeah... Landing gear with wheels for space planes that I'm probably not going to use. Uh, mobile processing lamb, lamb? lab for the larger rockets. It takes two Kerbins, have to be inside. Two Kerbins? Two Kerbals have to be inside for it to work. And it lets you reuse experiments, which is really helpful. We also get ladders and a thermometer. Great for science. But this is the real prize at 90 science. It gives us another battery. It's a small circular battery that will attach to the base of the Stay Putnik. And photovoltaic panels. Simple solar panels that don't move or track the sun at all. But they are solar panels. It also gives us lights. But that solar panel is the real prize for that group. Because after that, we can make unmanned probes. Because they'll have a power source. We won't have to worry about them losing power. Which is a huge problem for me. <laughs> so, that's that. We got new stuff to play with next time. Bye.